Today, we're breaking down Batman's impossible 18-hour days, Green Arrow's precision archery demands, Punisher's military conditioning, Daredevil's sensory enhancement training, Captain America's peak human claims, and Spider-Man's proportional strength myth. The shocking truth? Most of these regimens would literally kill a normal human within weeks, ranking them from F to S tier based on four crucial criteria. Strength gains, injury risk, recovery time, and real-world feasibility. By the end, you'll discover which superhero training could actually work in the real world. Let's start with the Dark Knight himself. Batman supposedly trains 18 hours a day across multiple disciplines, including martial arts, gymnastics, detective work, and strength training. First, let's talk calories. An 18-hour training day would burn approximately 8,000 to 10,000 calories daily. That's like eating 40 Big Macs every single day just to maintain your weight. Most elite athletes consume 3,000 to 4,000 calories during peak training, making Batman's requirements completely unrealistic. Now, here's where it gets ridiculous. Batman has supposedly mastered 127 different fighting styles. Real martial artists spend 10 to 15 years achieving black belt proficiency in just one discipline. To master 127 styles would require over 1,500 years of dedicated training. Even if Batman started at age 5, he'd need multiple lifetimes. The strength training alone presents massive problems. Batman regularly performs feats requiring superhuman strength while carrying 200 pounds of tactical gear. His training would need to support deadlifts exceeding 800 pounds, bench presses over 500 pounds, and Olympic-level gymnastic skills. This combination is physiologically impossible without performance-enhancing substances. But here's the real killer, sleep deprivation. Batman operates on two to four hours of sleep nightly. Sleep is when your body produces growth hormone, repairs muscle tissue, and consolidates memory. Without adequate recovery, his performance would plummet within days. Real Special Forces soldiers require six to eight hours of sleep to maintain peak performance. Compare this to actual elite athletes. Olympic decathletes, who train across multiple disciplines, typically focus on eight to 10 events maximum and still require two to three rest days weekly. Navy SEALs, considered among the world's most physically capable humans, train six to eight hours daily with mandatory recovery periods. The metabolic demands alone would cause Batman's body to cannibalize muscle tissue within weeks. His cortisol levels would skyrocket, his immune system would collapse, and his injury risk would approach 100%. From a scientific standpoint, Batman's training routine earns a solid F tier. It's not just unrealistic, it's a guaranteed path to physical breakdown. Now let's examine Oliver Queen's archery-focused approach. At first glance, specializing in one weapon seems more realistic than Batman's everything everywhere routine. Professional archers, like those competing in the Olympics, typically draw bows with 40 to 50 pounds of force. Green Arrow's combat effectiveness suggests he's using a 150 to 200 pound draw weight, similar to medieval war bows. Drawing this repeatedly creates enormous stress on the shoulder joints, specifically the rotator cuff and deltoid muscles. Here's the math. Drawing a 200 pound bow 100 times daily generates 20,000 pounds of cumulative shoulder stress. That's equivalent to doing 500 overhead presses with 40 pound weights. Your rotator cuff simply isn't designed for this repetitive loading pattern. Real Olympic archers shoot 200 to 300 arrows during peak training days, but they use significantly lighter bows and require extensive recovery protocols. They spend two to three hours daily on strength training, specifically targeting shoulder stability and injury prevention. Green Arrow's perfect accuracy under combat stress presents another problem. Maintaining precision while moving, jumping, or fighting requires extraordinary proprioceptive control. This level of body awareness takes decades to develop and deteriorates rapidly under physical fatigue. The metabolic demands are more reasonable than Batman's routine. Archery training burns approximately 300 to 400 calories per hour, making Green Arrow's daily requirements manageable at 2,500 to 3,000 calories. However, his combat readiness suffers from over-specialization. While he's mastered archery, his hand-to-hand -hand combat skills and overall athleticism would lag behind more well-rounded fighters. Real military snipers train extensively in close quarters combat, specifically because specialized weapons have limitations. From a scientific perspective, Green Arrow's training earns an A-tier. 
The specialization makes it highly feasible compared to generalist approaches. And while repetitive stress creates some injury risk, proper periodization and shoulder maintenance protocols could make this sustainable. It's realistic enough that a dedicated athlete could successfully implement it with appropriate modifications for injury prevention. Unlike Batman's impossible generalist routine, Punisher's training mirrors real Special Forces programs, making it our most grounded option so far. The Punisher's daily routine centers on functional strength training, weapons pro efficiency, and tactical conditioning. He's essentially maintaining peak soldier fitness indefinitely. Real Special Forces operators train six to eight hours daily with structured periodization, altering high intensity phases with recovery periods. His strength requirements are significant but achievable. Carrying 80 to 100 pounds of tactical gear while maintaining combat effectiveness requires deadlifts around 400 to 500 pounds and excellent cardiovascular conditioning. Navy SEALs and Army Rangers regularly achieve these benchmarks through systematic training. The metabolic demands clock in around 4,000 to 5,000 calories daily. Compare this to Batman's impossible 10,000 calorie requirement and you see why specialization matters. Here's where Punisher's approach gets realistic recovery protocols. Military training emphasizes injury prevention and sustainable performance. Real Special Forces units mandate rest days, medical monitoring, and structured deload weeks. Punisher's routine could theoretically include these elements. The psychological training component adds another layer. Stress inoculation training, tactical decision making under pressure, and weapons maintenance require significant mental energy, but don't create the same physical breakdown as Batman sleep-deprived multitasking. From a scientific standpoint, Punisher earns an S tier. His training mirrors proven military methodologies, stays within human physiological limits, and represents the gold standard for realistic superhero conditioning. While the lack of support infrastructure creates challenges, the core routine remains scientifically sound and achievable. Matt Murdock's training focuses on enhanced sensory perception and acrobatic combat skills. But here's the problem. Enhanced senses don't magically improve your physical training capacity. Daredevil's sensory training involves meditation, environmental awareness exercises, and proprioceptive development. These skills are real and trainable. Blind athletes often develop superior spatial awareness and hearing acuity. However, this neurological adaptation doesn't translate to superhuman physical performance. The real issue lies in his acrobatic demands. Daredevil performs parkour sequences that would challenge Olympic gymnasts. The metabolic cost of constant high-intensity movement is enormous. Let's break down the physics. A typical Daredevil rooftop sequence involves jumping 15 to 20 feet horizontally, landing with perfect precision, then immediately transitioning to combat. Each landing generates forces three to five times your body weight through your joints. Performing this hundreds of times nightly would destroy your knees, ankles, and spine within months. Real parkour athletes train two to three hours daily, maximum, with extensive warm-up protocols and progressive skill development. They also use proper landing techniques and avoid repetitive high-impact movements. Daredevil's routine ignores every principle of injury prevention. His recovery requirements are impossible without superhuman healing. The combination of high-impact acrobatics, combat stress, and sensory overload would require 10 to 12 hours of sleep daily, plus extensive physical therapy. Daredevil operates on minimal sleep while maintaining peak performance. The metabolic demands approach 6,000 to 7,000 calories daily due to constant high-intensity movement. While achievable short-term, sustaining this intake while maintaining low body fat for acrobatic performance becomes increasingly difficult. From a scientific perspective, Daredevil earns a D tier. The sensory training elements are realistic and beneficial, but the physical demands violate basic principles of exercise physiology and injury prevention. His routine would result in catastrophic joint damage within the first year. Steve Rogers represents the ultimate peak human concept, but what does that actually mean scientifically? The answer reveals why even enhanced humans face impossible training demands. Peak human performance has measurable limits. The strongest humans deadlift around 1,100 pounds, run marathons in two hours, and maintain these abilities through carefully structured training. Captain America supposedly operates at these maximum levels across all physical attributes simultaneously. Here's the metabolic reality. Maintaining peak human strength requires 4,000 to 5,000 calories daily. Peak endurance performance needs similar caloric intake. Peak speed development demands explosive training that conflicts with endurance adaptations. 
Combining all three creates competing physiological demands that cancel each other out. Captain America's well-rounded peak performance violates the principle of training specificity. The recovery requirements become astronomical. Training at maximum human capacity in multiple domains would require 12 to 14 hours of sleep daily, plus professional massage therapy, cryotherapy, and medical monitoring. Elite athletes specializing in single disciplines already push recovery to its limits. Consider the super soldier serum factor. Even if we accept that chemical enhancement allows peak performance, the training to maintain it remains problematic. Enhanced recovery might reduce sleep requirements, but enhanced performance capabilities would proportionally increase training demands. The psychological stress adds another layer. Operating at peak human capacity creates enormous mental fatigue. Decision-making deteriorates, reaction times slow, and injury risk increases. Real peak performers carefully manage training stress to avoid burnout. Captain America's combat effectiveness requires maintaining these peak attributes while under extreme stress. Research shows that physical performance degrades significantly during combat situations due to adrenaline, decision-making demands, and psychological pressure. From a scientific standpoint, Captain America earns a C tier. While the serum provides enhanced recovery and performance capabilities, maintaining peak human level across all physical domains simultaneously creates competing adaptations that limit effectiveness. Even with chemical enhancement, the training demands remain extremely challenging and would require perfect execution of periodization, recovery protocols, and nutritional timing to avoid overreaching. Peter Parker's spider powers create the most scientifically absurd training scenario we've examined. The proportional strength of a spider concept sounds cool, but real arachnid biomechanics reveal why this approach breaks every law of exercise physiology. Let's start with the strength claim. Spiders can lift 10 to 50 times their body weight, which sounds impressive until you understand scaling physics. A 170 pound human with proportional spider strength would lift 1,700 to 8,500 pounds. That's not training, that's supernatural power that requires supernatural recovery systems. Here's the metabolic nightmare. Maintaining superhuman strength would require eating 10,000 to 15,000 calories daily minimum. Spider-Man's fast metabolism supposedly makes this worse, potentially requiring 20,000 plus calories. No human digestive system could process this intake while maintaining the lean physique needed for web-slinging acrobatics. The wall-crawling ability presents another physics problem. Real spiders use microscopic hairs that interact with molecular forces. Scaling this to human size would require palm surface areas the size of dinner plates, plus grip strength that would crush everything you touched. The training to control this strength would be impossible. Imagine trying to shake hands without accidentally breaking every bone in someone's arm. Web swinging creates the ultimate biomechanical disaster. Each swing generates forces equivalent to a car crash through your shoulder joints. The deceleration forces alone would tear ligaments and shatter bones. Real gymnasts performing similar movements use carefully designed equipment and limit repetitions to prevent career-ending injuries. Spider Sense adds a neurological component that makes traditional training irrelevant. Precognitive danger detection would eliminate the progressive overload principle that drives all human adaptation. Why train reaction time when you already know what's coming? This supernatural ability removes the fundamental challenge that makes training effective. The recovery requirements become completely theoretical. Healing from superhuman training loads would require superhuman regeneration. Real humans need 48 to 72 hours to recover from intense strength training. Spider-Man would need recovery systems that don't exist in human biology. From a scientific perspective, Spider-Man earns a solid F tier. His abilities transcend human physiology so completely that calling it training becomes meaningless. It's pure superhuman power that operates outside the laws of exercise science, making any comparison to real-world fitness completely irrelevant. We have our definitive rankings. Punisher dominates with S-tier. His military-focused approach stays within human limits while maximizing combat effectiveness. Green Arrow earns A-tier for highly feasible specialization with manageable injury risks. Captain America gets C-tier despite chemical enhancement due to competing training demands. Batman drops to F-tier for his physiological impossible 18-hour routine that would kill any human within weeks. Daredevil earns D-tier. His sensory training has merit, but the physical demands guarantee catastrophic joint damage. Spider-Man bottoms out at F-tier because his abilities transcend human biology entirely. Most importantly, 
Accept that peak human performance requires choosing your battles. You can be incredibly strong, remarkably skilled, and exceptionally conditioned, but you can't maximize all three simultaneously without chemical enhancement or supernatural abilities. The myth-busting truth, real superhero fitness means training smarter, not harder, while respecting the biological limits that keep you human. Want to try a science-based superhero routine? I'll link a realistic training template in the description. Which hero did you think would win before watching? Drop your predictions in the comments below and subscribe for more myth-busting breakdowns.